Hello and welcome to this floss tube video. This is something different for this channel. I used to have cross stitch on here before, really big into my cross stitch, but I lost my stitchy bug a bit and I packed my things away. But since stitching on my wedding sampler for my stepdaughter, I have got, I've won, the itch has come back basically, the itch has come back. So I packed away all my things before into this box. This is the edited version. There was more, but that's been packed further back. But these are the things that I thought, yes, I know I'm going to come back to these. So what I thought we would do today is have a look through this box and put some things back into the drawers. I used to have a whole stack of these drawers with my cross stitch. But I just want to have one of these drawers now for the cross stitch in so it doesn't overwhelm me. I think I got to the place where because I have a lot of bigger stitching, I like my mirabilias, and because I was stitching bigger things, I wasn't getting them finished. I had too much on the go and I just felt overwhelmed and that was spoiling my enjoyment. So what I want to do now is just have a few projects in here to concentrate on. So there's no pressure. I can just get them out and do them as and when. So that is what I've been doing. I'm, this one, I really enjoyed doing it because I had it in my frame, in my craft room. So I would just put a line of stitching in whenever I wanted and it just took the pressure off. This one is just a verse that I'm going to say at the wedding, a reading at the wedding. And so I just made it up. I took the outline from a book and used the letter in. So yeah, it's just... Just my little thing that I think is the style of the, what the bride would like and her colours. So that is that. But I know we all want to know what's in. Oh, sorry. We all want to know what's in the box. So it is a big box. Not everything has been started. There are some charts as well that I really wanted to get to. I've also got my book from last year this was beginning of 2022 and so that tells me what the projects were that i was working on so if i can't remember any information hopefully it should be there so let's see what we've got in the box if you used to watch my fancy lady cross stitch channel thank you for joining me welcome i'm glad that you're here so this one is one that I finished that is waiting to be framed and this is the bumblebee from Bothy Threads and it's a kit stitched on the actual fabric that comes with the kit. It's an Ada and it has the black dots on it. So there's another kit, a fox one, that you'll see later on that I want to get to I wanted to make these into cushions so that's why I was waiting for the other one so I could use the same backing fabric for both of the cushions so that is I think it's flight of the bumblebee maybe <laughs> that one so I did get that one finished I think since anyone's last seen anything so that can go over with the finishes so what have we got next I even took all these were in homemade bags I took them out so that I could use those because I use my bags for my knitting projects and my cross stitch I took them out of the bags so that I could use the bags anyway so that's why they're all in these plastic folders now this is another new start last year last April I think and it's between the pines and it's uh, Emma Congdon from the book cross stitch for the earth and the one I was doing should be the one that's marked, hopefully. Oh, that's the chart. So this is how it looks. So yeah, I really like this one. We've got a woods down the road from us. So it just seemed in keeping that one. So, so far I've got, I was stitching this on a dark green Ada because a lot of it isn't actually stitched. You just use the 
fabric and I think my intention was because we were going on holiday this was going to be a holiday piece so I thought I'd get the Ada and then it would be an easier stitch especially being a dark fabric so I'm usually an even weave stitcher but this is a nice fabric actually sorry about all the crinkles <laughs> as I say they all come out of storage so that's how far I got so I have got is that the right way up Is it the right way up? No, it's the wrong way up. <laughs> Let's try this way. Okay, so that's how far I got. So you now you can see the deer and the shape of some of the other animals and things. So that is my Between the Pines by Emma Congdon. She is a favourite designer of mine. I do like her pieces. So that is that one. So what I need to do is put these into different piles so I know what I'm feeling now and what's going to go back in the box. This isn't just a whip parade. This is a what am I going to actually be stitching on. So I think, sorry, making a lot of noise. I think this one is going to be a keeper. So I shall put that one in that box. For now, we might have to edit down because if everything goes in the box, there's going to be trouble. This one's not going to be going in the box. Not at the moment. This one is a dimensions kit. It's a gold collections petite and it's secret, Santa's secret. And so I've seen this one stitched up and I really like it. I'm not a big Santa fan for stitching. And I think now, moving forward, I prefer to stitch winter projects rather than Christmas, I think. But I do want to get this one finished. And I am quite far on this one. There. <laughs> so I added fabric. If ever you've stitched a dimensions, you will know that they don't give you a lot of extra fabric. So I put some extra fabric round. And this is where he is. So he looks a little bit sinister at the moment. <laughs> the eyes are very blue, but hopefully once there's more greenery this side, then it will look better. As I say, I have seen it stitched up and really liked it. So there's Santa's secret. So I would like to get him finished. But I think for the moment, this this time of year, I think he is going to be back in this box, so he can go down there. Right, we've got another one now that's Christmas, because it's still in the Christmas bags. So this one is the Christmas in London by Mirabilia. And I really loved that. I, when it first came out, I wasn't sure about it because I felt it was too busy and I wasn't over keen on it. But then I saw a running stitch stitched it and I loved it. And I think it was because it was bigger. You could see it stitched up. It didn't seem so crammed in. And so I wanted to stitch it, but then I didn't get very far with it. I'll show you how far I got. <laughs> because... That's the stocking down there. <laughs> so I used this fabric <laughs> because I'd really just lost oomph with it. And as I say, I was thinking, I've got other Christmas projects to finish. I'm never going to get there. I shouldn't have started it. So at the moment, this is going to be on the back burner as well. So I may come back to it and just have it as something I work on over the Christmas period, sort of over years. We've not without pressure to finish it, but that is definitely on, well on the back burner, that one is. But I do love the design when it's stitched up. I think I need to see if Running Stitch is, I don't think she's making videos anymore. I need to see if her video is still up and remember how it looked to ignite my passion for it again. So next one looks like it's another Mirabilia. This one I have got further with. 
You can see my state of mind when I pack these away because they're all just shoved in here, aren't they? And what really was feeling defeated, I think is the word. Just too much on the go. I know some people, just trying to find the picture. I know some people have loads, like 70 projects, and they're happy with that, but it's just not my personality. And I do see it as a to-do list and it does become overwhelming. So this one is my other sort of Christmas piece. How can I get it in? Ooh. So this is, what is this? <laughs> Snow Queen by Mirabilia. And yeah, I've got quite a lot of that done. Really need to finish her. Oh, sorry, this box is all right now, isn't it, for these bigger ones? So yeah, really need to finish her. I still love her, still want this finished. Do I want to stitch on her at this present moment? I don't think I do. But this is, what were the... I haven't got the fabric for this, but this will be an even weave. I think it was pole stitches, this one. But like I say, this is a few years ago now as well, so, but yes, pole stitches even with 32 count, I believe. So that is definitely to be finished, but maybe review the situation like September or something. Okay, next one in here. This is Autumn Lane Stitchery. And it moons out, brooms out. And I'm sure I stitched on this last October. I do enjoy stitching on this one. It is a fun piece, apart from the moon. <laughs> I'm reluctant to stitch on the moon because I have got some sparkly thread going through that to give it a little bit of a sparkle. But this is moons out, brooms out. I think what I'm going to do is move that box over. Okay, I've cleared the decks. Hopefully this will be better for both of us. <laughs> so this is Moons Out, Brooms Out. So I'll finish that bottom section and I'm on the letters. As I say, there's a lot of moon to go on here. So this fabric is even weave 28 count and it's called Dusky Sky and it's by Fabric Flair. This is a printed fabric, it's not a hand dyed fabric. So yeah, liking, loving that. Um, what do I want to do with this? In the box or to be stitched? I am tempted, because it's a nice stitch, to have it as like a palette cleanser. <laughs> for thin I know there's gonna be bigger things to stitch. So I think it's gonna go in the stitch now box at the moment it would be nice to get it finished for halloween this year so that's in that one next one another mirabilia you can see my problem can't you with my big ladies <laughs> can't see my problem. Yeah, but I've got the information. So this is Fairy Moon by Mirabilia. This is by Pole Stitches and the fabric is Bewitched. And here she is. So I am very near a finish on her. I think mainly it's just the bottom. I think I've done most of the, of the rest of it. Apart from beads, obviously. So yeah, very close to a finish on her. Ah, the moon. That's what I'm missing, the moon. I wish I could see where the actual picture is. I don't know what I've done with that, but yes, she's looking up at a moon. <laughs> So, is she going back in the box or to be finished? 
I think to be finished. It's, but I do think she might be edited down, knowing what's coming up. Okay, what we got next? Another Mirabilia. This is the Mirabilia show. Now this is Spring Topiary Garden. It doesn't look very impressive on the picture, but when we saw it at retreat, it was beautiful. And so I started this one with Stitch and Joanne. I started the Moon Fairy, what she called, <laughs> with Stitch and Joanne. She's finished most things. She's probably finished this, but I haven't. So this is on the same white fabric. It's called Snow. It's an opalescent white and it's 32 count Murano. Mar 32 count Murano. I really love this fabric. It's got substance to it, but it's nice to stitch on. So that is how far I am at the moment. I'll bring it a little bit closer to you. So yeah, that's a lovely one. And I would like to carry on with this one. And I'm thinking I'd like to carry on with this one more than the Fairy Moon. But I'm thinking I should finish Fairy Moon. But I don't want to lose my stitchy bug. So I'm thinking this one. Sorry, Fairy Moon. I think you might be demoted. Because <laughs> I'm not going to want too many Mirabilias, am I? So I'm very conscious of just not get feeling overwhelmed and feeling like, like I'm not getting anywhere. I did find it helped when I put things in that box and put them in the wardrobe out of the way. I did find that rather than being in these drawers staring at me, I felt like it was more out of sight, out of mind. It wasn't accusing me every time I came in my craft room that I'm not done any. Since our hobby, it's not... It shouldn't be stressful, it should be de-stressing. So I'm going to take Fairy Moon out. I'm going to put Topiary Garden in because it's the right time of year anyway, isn't it, for that one? Okay, next. Ah, now this one, or these two, should I say. So I started this one, the Bothy Threads Seahorses. It's called Shall We Dance? And it's a kit. And I saw it on LNS channel. It's Lorraine. Hello, Lorraine, if you're watching. So I saw the I saw Lorraine stitching it, and I will put any links of anybody I mention will be below the video. And I really loved it. I thought it was I love the colours of it. So I started doing it and this was one that I took on holiday. This was really screwed up. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> For anybody who says, oh, your craft room is always so tidy. This is the true me. <laughs> so I started this one. As you see, they are beautiful colours. I've also got a needle stuck in there for ages, which is a no-no, isn't it? So as you see, it's got these blue dots on, which is what they do with the Bothy threads. But where I think it was on the orange, yes, the orange, I didn't like how you could see it through the actual fabric, the dots. So I was thinking maybe I should change the fabric. And then Lorraine on her channel, she was giving away, she had done the swimming school by Buffy Threads. And she was giving away, she got some leftovers and so she was giving away the chart and some leftovers. So she passed it on to me so I could then make it up with my own colours and stitch it. And I thought it would be a good companion piece to the seahorses. And so I did actually purchase a piece of fabric for these two to go on. I was going to do them separately, not as one, but I just bought a big piece of fabric. So this fabric that I wanted to stitch it on is 28 count even weave once again, and it's called, it's, it's, it's from Lakeside Needlecraft, by the way, I think it's exclusive to them, Aquamarine. Can you see that? So it's a really nice, 
under the sea i can't see you so i hope you can see this <laughs> really nice under the sea sort of like water it looks like you know the top of the water when it's like um you know when like oils on there and you get that pattern it's very much like that so i really love that and i think they would look great on there so that's what i'm going to be stitching it on that is quite the right color holding it back here so you can see plenty of the white and the greens gray greens and things but it's not too dark so yeah i think that would they would look good on there so that is something i want to go back to but as i say basically at the moment it's a non-start because i'm going to restart it so it would be nice to work on that in the summer so i don't know whether to put it into my box now as a reminder not to be stitched now but when we get to a bit of the summer months or i could take it on holiday with me going away soon i don't know but i think it's going to go in this box for the moment Next one is the biggie. So this is a long dog and it is Templar of Prophecy. Have I got a covering picture? I've got 15 pages of chart, I know that. <laughs> uh -huh. Here it is, a nice screwed up picture for you. So this is Templar of Prophecy. So I really love this one. It's really nice to stitch on as well because it's just one colour. But it has a lot of detail in that. So I have done a lot on this, but there's still a lot to go. So I'm just on the second level. So there's going to be another one further down as well. But, oh, just stand. Uh, so that is where I am at the moment. So I've already put the year in 2022 because this was like my pandemic one. <laughs> and um, I've got my initials in there as well. The initials are over this side. I wanted to commemorate the Queen on this piece and also we've got the coronation in May so I wanted to incorporate those dates as well because I do feel like it is a, not an heirloom but you know what I mean, it's a significant time in my life that what the world has gone through so yeah this is going to be that piece so I really want to finish this. And it's something completely different to what I usually do. So, oh, that one is definitely going to be finished. I think that one's definitely going to go in the box. I don't want to make plans like I have before, saying I want to get a page finished by a certain time. But I think it'd be nice just to have ready so I can do little blocks of it and just keep chipping away at it would be nice. I'm going to have to dig out my nicer bags again because I don't like using these ones. Oh, the fabric is, the fabric is just an even weave, it's 28 count and it's just in a stone colour and the thread I'm using is just a DMC and it's 115. So if I hold it here maybe you'll see the tones so it's 115 so you get darker and lighter red tones so i am some pieces i'm picking out so some pieces i'm just doing in the brighter piece some in the darker piece some so sometimes i'm doing it so i've got a true colour and sometimes I'm doing it where I'm folding it up and stitching it so I'm getting the blend of the different colours so it means I'm getting even more colours to try and highlight different areas. That's the plan. Sometimes it works out, 
sometimes it doesn't but i haven't been fussing about it if something that was going to be lighter is darker then so be it <laughs> so yes so this is getting full already look <laughs> What else have we got? I think that's all the projects. I've got one more confession, really. I'd like to go in there. So this one that looks like a it's a in a dog poop bag. <laughs> so it's all screwed up for a reason because I was annoyed at myself. I took this on holiday last October. I think this is another nail in the coffin of my stitching and I hadn't been stitching on this much and so I thought right I'll this is a good project to take on holiday it's the temperature butterflies by stitching mummy it's a lovely chart and so you're recording the temperatures through the year and I'd really been enjoying it and then I lost momentum and so I didn't do any. So then I planned on catching up. So I took it on holiday to catch it up. And I finished doing that last butterfly. And when I went to find the next butterfly, I realised I was completely wrong. And I'd missed it because you're supposed to do four in a row. And then three. Because I've got the wrong size fabric and... You probably can't see but it's like branches there's faint branches coming up on the fabric so i had to go this way for the fabric so um sarah kindly recharted it for me so i could have three and then i still messed up because i did the colors for the wrong month i was a month behind well two months behind and i didn't i, I can't remember whatever it was the wrong temperatures for that month. I thought, because where are we are, we January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I thought I was doing September, but it, I should have done August. So, yeah, it got put by. So I don't know. I don't know whether to try and correct it, but I think I'm past the temperatures now. So then I don't know, because I've got so far, I don't know if I should either do another just random butterfly and just have it as is, or I could perhaps use them for like cards or something, but there's not much border around. So I don't know, but it just seems a shame after all that stitching, and I do like them, not to finish it. But at the moment, it's not calling to me. And it probably never will call to me, in honesty. But, yeah, it's just a shame because it is lovely. And I think it would look nice in the craft room on the wall there, wouldn't it? I need to do another butterfly, don't I? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. It wouldn't take me long to do a finish and then I could put it up, couldn't I? Shall I put it in the to stitch? I think I'd feel better if I did it and just finished off that last one and then framed it as is. It's going in that one to be stitched now. So all I have now in here is some charts that I want to get to. So I shall go through to see if I definitely still want to stitch these. And so I had a lot more that are in there, <laughs> but these are the ones I wanted to get to quicker, rather sooner rather than later. So first of all, we've got lavender and lace. And so I have already stitched the spring, and so I still want to stitch the summer. Have I got a picture for winter? Winter. Noel, the Christmas one. When I said I don't want to do Christmas stitching, I do want to do this one, but it will be the last one that I do because I love that dress. I love the colours. And then we've got Autumn. And then there is... is this 
Nantucket Rose. I've always loved this one as well. So I'd really love to do that one. And then Mirabilia's. Of, this is three for tea. Love this one. Don't see this one stitched very often. But I do really love that one. And then Garden Prelude. Another favourite one that I don't see stitched from enough. And then a couple of Nora Corbett's. So this one is Miss Black's Swallowtail. They're quite quickly, these Nora Corbett's, they do stitch up quite quickly, so I am hoping I'm going to get to these. So I do love those wings on those. This is the Miss Solar Eclipse. And then in this little Mirabilia book, I wanted to stitch the portrait of antique vines and it's just a little cameo I think is really sweet. This book just gives some information about different charts and things and it's a, it's a little bit of like a history but it hasn't got many in considering how many there are that just let you know some of them. But it was more for that little cameo chart that I bought it. Then I've got a couple of um, sheep virtues. So I have Little House Needleworks. That is freedom. Sorry, friendship. <laughs> Once again, these wouldn't take long to stitch up. And then there's Hope, a little Christmas one. So I would like to do that Christmas one. It's very cute. And then one from a calendar. I've got some others from this. They're all Beatrix Potter ones, but this was my favorite. So I just condensed down to my favorite one. So this is, is it the tailor? What's he called? The tailor of Gloucester, he's called. I thought that was perfect for the craft room. So I'd like to do him. Then I've got a little kit and it's called um, Nitty Kitty. And this is Cat's Rules. It's got the Ada and everything, but I probably would change out the fabric. But it's knitting a scarf, so I really like that one. I'd like to get around to knitting him. But changing, I wouldn't put those words, I'll put something else at the bottom. I quite fancied, is it long enough yet? <laughs> so there's that one. And then this is the kit I was talking about that I wanted to do as a cushion to go with the bumblebee. And so this is the fox. It's called Poppy Fox, Poppy Field. And so I'd really like to stitch him. And I'll do that on that fabric that comes with, with the spots. So it matched the bumblebee as well. And that is everything. So that is all that I have. So I think there's just room in here. So I don't know what I'm going to pull out to stitch first. Let me have a think. The one that I'm thinking of that's coming to mind that I think I should do is the topiary garden. So this one is the one calling to me. So this one is going to go in the hoop, well, in the Q snap, in the craft room. And yeah, let's see how far I get with this one. So I shall take a picture. Hopefully I shall come back, report back this time next month and we'll see how much stitching I've got done but if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but I would like to carry on um, 
we'd like to carry on with this lady on this side I think is the plan so we'll see how far I get with her so thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you'll be seeing a lot more cross stitch in the future so take care bye for now